Hey everyone, this is Teresa from Base 10 Montessori, and today I have an Easter project for you. Uh, in all the busyness, I almost forgot about one of my favorite um, springtime practical life activities, and that is weaving a basket. And this is pretty simple. I would say it's a little bit of a struggle for my second years or four-year-olds, for those of you who don't follow Montessori concepts. Um, so I'd say this is probably, four-year-olds can give it a try. They're going to need a, a probably a fair amount of help, but five-year-olds usually have mastered this. If you have a child that's really into sewing or knitting, crocheting, and they're around four to five years old, then I would say um, this will probably be a great activity for them. If they haven't done much of that before, this might be a little bit complicated. So the skills you're going to need for this are cutting, tracing, and working with yarn, particularly weaving. So if your child is good at tracing, at cutting paper, and your child is has some dexterity with working with yarn, I'd say give it a try. Um, older children also like this because it's fun and it's decorative. So this I would put, I, I usually put in the practical life area. And um, right here I have my template and I think actually I'm gonna post this template on my locals community. So um, if there, there should be a link on my YouTube page for my locals community. So if you're a member there, you can get this template as well as my dot game plan template for the video I posted yesterday. Um, and this template is pretty simple. Um, this is the basic directions that I use for sending to my friends, and that's basically uh, step one, cut out the template. Step two, bend the sides up. Step three, weave the yarn. Um, children need a little more guidance than that, but as an adult, that's pretty much the directions for that. And don't worry, I am gonna show you this, so if that didn't make sense, I am gonna give the full presentation. Actually, maybe not the full presentation. I might start weaving, stop, and then show you what the finished project looks like because otherwise I'm just going to be weaving for a really long time. <laughs> Anyways, this is um, an 8-inch circle that I'm using right here. So as you can see, this is your normal copy paper. So that's the size that I'm using. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cut out your template onto a very firm uh, cardstock type paper or if you have a bunch of those um, like manila envelopes and stuff like that, they work really well for a template. Um, mine is really well used, I've used it a lot. If you're using it in the classroom, probably not a bad idea to laminate this as well. So anyways, this is the template I'll post to my Locals page that so you that you have access to it. If you have a Locals account, you can find it there. So let me put that aside for a second. And here is my cardstock template that I would put out for the children to use. I'd put that out on the shelf. And then I would also put out a tray and what you're going to need in your tray. Um, you might want to put out a few different colors of cardstock paper, right? Because um, maybe Easter, fun Easter colors. And you're going to want some yarn. And you can have multiple colors of yarn and I'll show you how to switch so that your Easter basket can go um, and make different colors. It's not that hard. You can just cut and tie the yarn together. Um, also, this is great for Christmas time too, but everybody likes thinking about Easter baskets this time of year. So I thought this is, I always do this in the spring or I do it right before Christmas time. Um, and then you're going to need a pencil and some scissors. And I don't have room to work on my tray. So I'm going to move my tray out. Usually I work on a protector. If I put in this in the classroom, put a nice little protector out to protect your table. But it's not a super messy work. So it's not like painting or anything like that. So it's pretty clean. But you might want to just put a nice protector out so that when they use the scissors and the pencils, they can, they might, they won't damage your table unless you don't mind that they damage it. Then that's up to you. So first of all, let me move my scissors up here. So the first step is to just line up your template onto your paper. Now, for younger kids, um, you can put paper clips, you can maybe tape it on. It's sometimes really hard for them to hold it. The, sometimes those um, anything that clips on that can kind of clip, it'll get in the way a little bit, but not so much it'll make a big difference. So you're going to want to clip it on or tape it on if they have a hard time holding it in place. So give the child the template, the cardstock paper, if they need help holding it in place, maybe you just tape down a few edges or paper clip it on. And then you can start to 
trace it out. And so I'm not going to go through all the tracing for you because that would take a really long time and I'm trying to keep my videos a little bit on the shorter side. So once you get it all traced out onto your paper, you're going to want to cut it out with scissors. And let me show you what that final product looks like. You got it traced, you got it cut, and now there it is. There is your basket template right here. It's a little asterisk, right? So the second step that I put on my paper there, my very short instructions, is just to bend the sides up. I just like to fold them up. It makes it a little easier. So let's do that right now. So there we go. The sides are bent up just a little bit. That'll make it a little easier. Uh, so let's start with our first color of yarn. So if the child has a hard time holding the yarn and the basket at the same time, what you can do is just to make it a little easier for them, get some tape. tape it down. They can also work with a friend on this one since um, a lot of the time the kindergartners really enjoy working with this. They're getting into that second plane of development in a Montessori environment. That means that, you know, they tend to be, they're getting ready to be doing group work. And so buddying up, helping each other weave a basket could be a fun group work for a two, for I would say two children. Three would be unnecessary. That would be probably too many. But for children who are in the second plane of development or transitioning into that second plane of development, that's a six to 12 age group. They love group work. They love working with buddies. So one of them can always help hold it and you can weave it and you're just going to weave in and out. So if you already have a weaving work in your classroom, if you have a little weaving frame, this should be very familiar to the child. You're just gonna go in and out. Make sure that the sides go up. That's kind of one of the tricky parts. Uh, although it looks really cute. If they just weave it in and, and the sides don't go up, it looks a little bit more like a flower. But if you wanna make a basket, the sides have to come together. And so if two friends are working together, or even if you have an older child helping a younger child, one can help turn, one can help hold, or if it's taking them a really long time, they can take turns. Um, the difficulty with taking turns on something like this is when you get done, who gets to take it home? Um, so maybe they'll end up making two of them and they'll both work together. One will make one and help the other and they get to take it home and the other one will do the same for the other friend. So as you can see, this really takes a lot of focus. It takes hand-eye coordination, um, it takes a little bit of crossing the midline, and that pincer grip, take a look at that, developing the hand for writing. Um, we can also go into a lesson on where does yarn come from, and if you're doing this during Easter time and you want to put, you know, a spiritual message with it, like if you're getting ready for Easter Sunday or Good Friday and you want to bring a lesson together about Easter. This might be um, just a nice way to put in a craft. I actually learned this craft from doing VBS. So I've used it during um, VBS. And the first time I tried it, it was a, I was not Montessori trained. I didn't have a lot of experience. Um, and I tried to do this with two young children. It was, it was not the best experience ever. <laughs> So anyways, as you can see, it's starting to come together. So there's your little basket, right? And maybe I'll show you right now how to switch colors. It's a good timing because I have a little bit of a knot in my yarn, so let's just cut it. That's how I roll. Uh, and maybe we'll do white. We'll have a, a yellow, pink, white basket. And you can... Um, also work on what it looks like to tie. This is a little bit of a complicated tie. Um, 
So what I do, teach them to put it around the finger, make that X, then it goes through the loop. Now in Montessori, we have the bow tying frame and, um, oh, at some point I should show you how I show children to make a knot when they're doing sewing, which um, I have a neat little trick for that too. So at some point I need to make a video of that because I think that will help. So just show them how to make that knot and then they can just keep going. And what I'll probably do is I will edit all of this uh, middle part out so it doesn't take forever for me to film. But I'd like to show you the finished product. So I'm going to keep going. But I don't want to make this, this lesson, this video, so incredibly long that you get bored. <laughs> we want to keep it short and to the point, which I'm not always good at. I usually go down a rabbit hole with my lessons and I start making these really, really long videos. So we're getting there. It's coming. Can you see it? Is it a good angle for it? And you see how these sides are now bending up. So the children are going to learn when they cut it um, and trace it. The more accurately you cut and you trace it, the better your basket will come together. So let's think about the control of error in this. Um, I kind of already went over the direct purpose, right? We're working on combining the skills that are building the development of the hand for writing. Um, so that would be control and coordination of movement. So that would be a direct purpose. And if you can think of any other direct purposes, go ahead and list them in the com comment section below. Um, but as far as control of error, how will the child know that they did this work right? Well, for one, it'll look like a basket, right? So it's going to be pretty obvious uh, that feedback is going to happen. So uh, pretty that feedback is going to happen pretty easily for the child. And, and um, if it turns into a basket, they've done it right. So there's your control of error as well as your direct purpose. Sometimes the control of error too, sometimes they'll, they'll skip two uh, instead of going every other one and it'll look a little different. Now, some children, this will bother them with the knot on the outside. Uh, and if it does, um, just be sure to tuck it in, tuck it under. Um, you also don't have to tie it. You can just start a new one and just tuck that last one under. So if it's really bothering the child, don't bother to tie it maybe and just tuck it in and then just start a new one again on the inside, just like you did the beginning. Um, and I can show you that technique here in a second. Uh, it doesn't stay put quite as nicely, but at the same time, um, it's an Easter basket made out of yarn and paper. Uh, it's not going to last forever, is it? Um, so it'll probably be okay. Plus the weaving keeps it tucked nicely. So let me show you what that looks like. Let's change colors again. So I might just want to, instead of tying, just let the child tuck it in. And you can work to tie it. You can work really hard to tie it together in a way that it's not seen. But if it's not really worth the effort, um, if your child doesn't mind, like I said, just don't tie it, tuck it in. When you're done, just tuck it in between the yarn so they can't see it and then just keep going. So you can eliminate the whole tying thing all together. Let me make sure I started on the right one here. Where am I at? Okay, we went in, so this one goes out. And of course, when we're doing this for the first time, when we're giving this lesson, we want to go really slow. And I have a tendency to speed up when I'm doing these lessons um, in front of a camera instead of in front of a child. So just remember, go really slow, be really deliberate with your movements because practical life area 
Um, one of its main purposes is the control and coordination of movement, developing the hand. And so we want to be really precise with this. We also want to develop, um, we want to develop the will, the child's will, the, con the control they have, not just over their hands and their body, but the control they have over their mind as well. And so developing patience is an important part of practical life. Um, Maria Montessori really talked a lot about virtue and developing characteristics um, for the child's spirit and as well as the mind and body. And I think that's really important too. So when we put out practical life works, we only, well, really with any of the works, there's very few works in the Montessori environment. We put more than one out. That's because the child has to learn to wait and that is a virtue, right? And when we're working with materials like this, we're developing concentration, we're developing um, the physical skills as well. And honestly, it all comes together because when you have the physical skills to do something, when you have the physical um, ability to do something, it affects your mind and your sp spirit. And so the child understands I can be independent. I can do things for myself. I can contribute to my community. I can make a beautiful basket and make my environment beautiful at home and at school. I have something to contribute. And children like to gain that independence as hard as it, as hard as it is for, for adults sometimes to allow them to have that uh, independence. It really is um, important for the child to develop that um, that quality in the three to six age group. And even in toddlers too, um, I would love, uh, to show you more about what an AMI toddler classroom, um, has the young children doing. And usually that's about 12 to 18 months old, up to two and a half and two and a half, they start in the primary environment. But when I worked in an AMI toddler room, they did baking and by baking, uh, they did, um, they did they went they would go to the fridge and get their milk and the milk was pre-measured in the toddler room we didn't have them measuring it so they did the milk they went to the fridge to get their milk they went to the fridge to get their egg and yes we let them crack eggs in toddlers it's pretty fun to watch um, they do food works like chopping a pickle chopping a carrot chopping a cucumber all that good stuff look at that we're almost done and here I am just chatting away um, so AMI toddlers really focus on that independence and not only does that give strength to um, the child's muscles, but it really allows them to develop their mind, develop the, their will, and the, all the virtues and characteristics that um, if you start reading Mon Maria Montessori's books, that's an important part to develop. Because um, what good is it to be really smart or really well educated if you don't know how to apply your knowledge, if you don't know how to wait, if you don't know how to work with others, if you don't know how to um, be independent. So those virtues are just as important as the academics. And in Montessori, we want to do both. Um, we don't want to just focus on the math and the language and the science, but we want to focus on the behavior and focus on developing those virtues and characteristics. And a lot of that starts with the practical life area, both in toddlers and in the, um, in the primary environment. Okay, I think I've made it far enough to stop. So I'm just going to tuck down these and I think that that's where I will leave my basket but I certainly could go further if I wanted to and let's just cut that off and you can just like I said you can tie it somewhere to one of these threads you can tie it you can tuck it in um, it depends on how independent you want the child to be uh, the more steps you add on the more skills they'll gain, the more strength in their hands they'll gain. Um, so if you have an older child, just keep adding on steps. Show them how to tie, uh, do more complicated ties, different type, 
types of ties. If you have fancy scissors, you can cut a little decorative uh, trim around the top. Um, they could also do some, they could glue some stuff on there. If you've got stickers, they could decorate it. So they can do different things with the paper part if you want. And I thought, um, now that I have my basket, I have to fill it with something. And at my farm, we grow lavender. That's one thing we do at my farm as well. Everybody that I worked with in Kentucky knows I have lavender. I'd always bring them a bunch of lavender. <laughs> so let's fill the Easter basket up. And I'm just going to hide my threads. I'm not even going to bother to tie them. Did you see that? That's how that works. So it can be as simple as you want it to be. So I've got a nice, mm, wow, that smells good. If you like lavender, that's amazing. Uh, the type of lavender we grow is called Phenomenal. I'm not bragging. That is just the name of the species. <laughs> so it's called Phenomenal Lavender. And at my farm, we also have duck eggs because I have ducks and they're really big. So just so, so you can see the size proportion. Now, duck eggs are kind of big. Uh, this is a bigger egg and I can tell we have two di di two different types of ducks. We have Anconas and Khaki Campbells and this is an Ancona egg and I can tell because it's bigger it's got a little bit of a bluish color. So just a little tidbit on that. And there we go. Uh, let me see if I can kind of show you the side. So that's what it'll look like and in comparison there's a very large duck egg in the middle on top of <laughs> some lavender just to give you an idea of, um, of the size. Anyways I hope I didn't make this um, video too long. I hope I didn't bore you by just chatting while I <laughs> did some basket weaving. Um, I have other weaving activities too. So if you're looking for cheap ways to introduce we weaving into your classroom, leave a comment below and I will be sure to make a video on that. I hope I didn't rush through this too much in the beginning. Um, but let me know if I rushed too much in one part and I'll go back and I will show you, um, exactly what to do. Uh, if, if you think I went too fast through the tracing and if, if you're offended by the fact I didn't actually cut it out, I didn't take the time to cut it out during the video. Uh, anyways, if you didn't like any of those things, leave a comment below. Uh, and if you did like it also leave a comment below saying that you liked it. Cause I like hearing those things. And, uh, other than that, please remember to like, um, YouTube's been removing my likes. So, uh, I'll have like seven likes on my videos and all of a sudden it'll go down to one like and it'll block it out and I can't get any more likes. So please try to like the videos. Please try to comment on them because they really help and share with others that you think might like this and, um, and subscribe. Of course, I'm trying to grow the community and I'd love for you to subscribe. So if you see this video and you like it, do all those things and I will see you in the next video.